politics is the only art whose artists regularly disown their masterpieces. 2019. India has just lost the ODI World Cup. The rift between Virat and Rohit is out in the open. The team is divided and things seem to have been the worst that they have ever been. And Rohit unfollows Anushka and Virat. Oh, the horror, the injustice. How could he? What does this mean for Indian cricket? This was later followed by... Rohit liked a tweet that said, Why was the vice captain Ajinkya Rahane standing behind in the Indian team photo, whereas Anushka was standing up front and center with Virat? Oh, the injustice! Okay, let's copy paste the same outrage down here again. Because frankly, I don't know how this is a headline news. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about it, and I don't get the outrage that it caused. I mean, it could have been different if things were hidden, right? But everybody already knew that there was something wrong. So what's up with the reaction? Especially when it's unclear whether Rohit actually followed Virat at any point. He doesn't even follow Sachin and Dhoni, so it won't surprise me that he never did. I do agree though. Unfollowing Anushka seems absurd at best and petty at worst. This whole episode is just weird, but sadly it doesn't end here. Soon, there were cryptic messages posted on both Virat's and Anushka's handle that were deduced to be about Rohit. This became the main point in a press conference for the upcoming West Indies tour. The same tour for which Rohit was taken to West Indies but then kept out of the final team. The reaction was breathtaking, genuinely breathtaking. Well, if you're thinking, at least now, they're fighting about something substantial, right? Well, in a few days, this news broke. Yes, Virat Kohli dated Rohit Sharma's wife. This for me is the prime example of how media can go to any extent to grab a headline. In the article itself, they clarify, this pic was taken in 2013 where Rikita was Virat Kohli's manager and they were out for a movie. But that's not what you start with, right? You start with this. Thankfully, after this, some common decency seemed to have prevailed. Things calmed down a bit till India went on lockdown. Cricket paused, the world had stopped and the media again needed stories. So suddenly, we had journalists writing articles like this. It actually reads like a children's argument, right? He plays with other kids, not with me. He plays with other kids, not with me. When we both live near each other. This was actually breaking news in cricket at that point. Breaking news during which actual news was being ignored. Something was brewing between the newly appointed board and Virat. Now historically, the board hates powerful captains. From Ganguly to Dhoni, history is full of tussles between the captain and the board. But Virat, for the past few years, seemed to have had a stranglehold on his team. So obviously, the board, now under new management, started pushing back, mostly in shadows though, behind closed doors. But come October, the doors were about to be blasted down. The team for Australia was announced and Rohit's name was missing from all the squads. Now initially, his exclusion was attributed to his hamstring injury. But within a few hours of this announcement, the official MI handle uploaded a video with Rohit batting beautifully in the nets. With reports coming in that he had no idea why he had been sidelined. And off went the rumour mill, gaining strength. Each and every time, Rohit walked out to bat, reaching its peak, with RCB getting knocked out and MI going to the finals. But just before the finals though, BCCI made a press release in consultation with Mr. Sharma. It has been decided to rest him for the ODIs and T20s. And he has been included in India's test squad. So in short, Rohit has a mysterious illness due to which he is unable to play in an international match but was fit enough to play in the IPL. Fit enough to score a half century in a final, winning MI its fifth IPL trophy. The Virat vs Rohit debate had reached its peak. Battle lines were drawn on Twitter and trenches were drawn on Insta and in the midst of all this, the Indian team left for Australia without Rohit on the plane. You can just see the story ride itself, right? It has just been one thing after other after other with Virat at the receiving end of each blow. So finally, he had had enough. On the eve of the first ODI against Australia, he went public with his side of the argument. Stating, before the selection meeting, we got a mail which said that he was unavailable for selection. He's picked up an injury and there is a two-week rest and rehab period and all of this has been explained to Rohit. After that, he played in the IPL. So we all thought he's going to be on that flight to Australia, which he wasn't. We had no information on whatever reason for why he's not travelling with us till we got an email that he's at the NCA. 
from the selection meeting to this email there has been no information there has been a lack of clarity and we've been playing the waiting game on this issue for a while now to put all of this simply virat had publicly pushed bcci under the bus washing his hands of the whole mess and quite rightfully so no matter the issues between the two how is it that the captain of the team is not informed about the situation of his players now you could ask why did neither virat nor ravi shastri directly call up rohit but in light of the issues between those two shouldn't this be bcci's job <sighs> for the first time in virat's captaincy career he had openly gone against his own board and bcci quickly went into damage control on the same day at 11:48 at night they made a press release stating that rohit sharma had to come back to mumbai after the ipl to attend to his ailing father His father is now recuperating well and Rohit has traveled to NCA to start his rehabilitation. What's more that they even went and arranged a conference call between Virat Kohli, Shastri and Rohit to resolve issues. The fire had been put out but the bridge had burned. This was the first proof that things had gone bad between the board and the captain. And the next few months were going to be nothing short of a pitched war played across the landscape of Indian cricket. It first started with the selection of the squad for England's India tour Virat wanted Shikhar Dhawan in the ODI squad while the committee wanted Prithvi Shaw or Padikal with both sides refusing to budge the standoff was so severe that the team announcement had to be delayed by 5 days but finally the committee backed off Dhawan was in who then paid back the captain's trust by scoring 169 runs in just 3 matches Virat had won the opening not just here but in those few months locked in the bio bubble things seem to have cooled off between virat and rohit they could be frequently seen talking to each other in the lobbies it's funny how things tend to just resolve themselves when there is no media to fan the flames right but virat making the next move answered a media's question with the cramped schedule was not only hectic but the bio bubble was damaging players mentality this was seen as a veiled criticism of the BCCI scheduling policy and they quickly responded players can take an off whenever they want we don't force anybody to play the next few months are full of such snipes and barbs and quote and quote leaked reports ultimately leading to a simple message virat needs to win the world test championship at all cost under any circumstances and he failed If you actually go through the media reports then you can draw a line before and after the WDC all those reports that were leaking from the BCCI suddenly disappeared the BCCI had gone silent a silence that was louder than any leaked report before a silence that was shattered suddenly on July 7th Shubham Gill had got injured during India's tour of England Virat wanted Shaw or Padikal to replace him but they were already playing in the tour to Sri Lanka so the bcci for the first time refused publicly the captain will have to choose from the options that he has if he had any issues then he should have said them during the team selection any pretense of things being normal between them had been thrown out of the window and this seemed to have opened the flood gates first ravi shastri whose tenure was to end after the world cup would not be renewed for another term followed by kumle being rumored to have been offered the job Even Dhoni becoming the team's mentor was somehow reported as a ploy to diminish Virat's power. So, all in all, the deck was being stacked against the king, bit by bit by bit. The writing was on the wall. The king was about to lose. So, came the counter move. On the morning of 13 September, news broke that Virat planned on giving up the limited over captaincy after the World Cup. The BCCI treasurer quickly responded, "This is all rubbish. Nothing like this is going to happen. Virat will remain the captain." This statement was further supported by the BCCI secretary, and as if timed to perfection, on 16 September, Virat announced that he was giving up the T20 captaincy after the World Cup, citing the workload. This was deduced as cutting off a finger to save the arm, letting T20 go to keep ODI and Tests. Now, putting the wise ball captaincy has been highly unusual by itself, but more importantly, he didn't inform BCCI about it. Unilaterally taking the decision. If you really want to, you can poke a million holes in Virat's statement. If captaincy is a burden, then why give up T20, which has the least matches all year? Why not give up RCB captaincy first? But rather than that, BCCI first decided to save face, stating that we have been in talks with Virat for months now. and virat will continue to contribute as a player and a senior member notice the wording here player and a senior member 
not as the captain in other words the self appointment of the odi and test captaincy was not accepted now i'm not going to speculate on what happened next nor talk about its credibility i'll just talk about the timing within days of virat's announcement reports started flooding in about how bcci already planned on replacing virat in limited overs captaincy how t20 world cup would determine his future how either ashwin or pujara had filed an official complaint against him and finally finally how virat had demanded that rohit be removed from the vice captaincy of the white ball team here is my question how come all of these reports suddenly happen to come out after virat's declaration if anything then this reports actually hurt indian cricket's image so what's the purpose in leaking them the answer to this i leave it to your judgment but here we stood virat who had also given up his rcb captaincy at this point was about to captain what could have been his last icc tournament depending on the outcome of that tournament no pressure right what followed was as disastrous as it was embarrassing so rather than going there i'm just going to go back to the start on the one question that had started this entire series is there a rift between those two the answer is how does it matter come on these are professionals at the top of their game fighting for the same position that to the throne of indian cricket by definition there will be competition between them there's nothing wrong in that they don't need to love each other or be brothers of the field i'm extremely confident that the next few months are going to be as turbulent as the last 3 so it doesn't matter whether there was a rift or not the only question that truly matters is can they play with each other can they work with each other to help india win and the answer as provided about a thousand times before is a resounding yes not only can they play but they seem to drive each other to excellence so in the next few months whenever you see a media report stating issues between those two just remember this answer given by virat to a reporter after the loss to pakistan will rohit be dropped from the next game the reporter asked virat answered with if you want controversy please tell me before so i can answer accordingly thank you for watching this video thanks for supporting me through this entire series i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching and hope you have a nice day